Yeah, this thing's uh, kind of awesome. Hello there, and welcome to a very long-awaited part two on my Roland MT200. Now, I did a video on this, I think years ago at this point, um, where I repaired this device, and uh, I had some issues at the end of that that prevented me from making a video about it, and actually many of those issues are still present. So I'm going to be doing a video on this one anyway, as best I can, because honestly it works well enough, it's just not perfect right now. But this thing is one of the coolest MIDI devices I own, and it potentially might just be the best all-around device you could possibly get for MIDI. Now, even longer ago, I talked about using this Yamaha Disc Orchestra as a MIDI playback device on my channel, and I really liked it then when I was using it, and it's still great. But it has two flaws, one of which is not its fault, as I mentioned, in that it's made by Yamaha, and it just doesn't always sound like what you would expect. <laughs> The other problem, though, is a little more severe, because this can only play Type 0 MIDI's, and it can only use double-density discs, if I remember correctly. The Roland MT200, though, has neither of those limitations, which makes it awesome for writing discs for and just downloading random MIDI's online and chucking them on it, because most of the time, they work. Part of why it's taken me so long to get back to this device to demonstrate it is that it's just so capable and there's so much to choose from. So I showed you it playing a Duke Nukem disc, and this is one that I made that contains all of the MIDI files from the game. But I'd also made a Doom disc, and I'd started working on music from other games like Strife and Descent and SimCity 2000. There's just a lot to go through, and that's only game music, because you can also get actual MIDI compositions of real albums and listen to those as well. Now I've mentioned that I have been having issues with this thing and they are present still and it's been very frustrating. So let's take this Doom disc that I made for example. I made this specifically for this unit with a nice label and everything and it doesn't work. But it used to work on here. Now I'm not sure if this disc went bad, I don't know the origins of this disc and I went with this one in particular because it was orange and looked good, but if I take the exact same set of midis that are on there and use this additional disc that I made, they will work without any issue. Now here's the thing. This is a new disc that I just made uh, yesterday before this video actually, and I do mean an actually new disc. But here's the thing that's really weird about the system and why I think that it is a problem with it. So that Doom disc didn't work, and I think that disc may have actually gone bad. But any freshly formatted disc in a PC or for a PC shows up as improper disc in this thing and just doesn't work. I'm not exactly sure what the problem is because I can format a disc in this device and then it will show up on a drive in a PC and work just fine. And some of these discs, like I'm pretty sure this one, will actually work in the PC as well. It's just really weird. So the only way that I can get this to work is to go into the disc menu, go over to Format Disc, put in a new disc, and then let it format it, and then it'll actually work. Now, while this is formatting, I'll take the opportunity to mention, yes, I could put a GoTech in. I covered this in the last video I did about this thing. I don't want a GoTech in here. The idea of making my own album discs of music to put on this thing is so cool that I really want to do that. Just putting a flash drive full of MIDI's on here isn't that exciting, and I could get a USB MIDI adapter if I wanted to just pipe MIDI's onto this thing very easily. So I'm keeping the floppy drive. Now I may try and replace the floppy drive somehow, I don't know yet. I have tried replacing it and I've done all of the, say, Amiga mods on the Sony floppy drives that are more desirable for that kind of thing, but they just haven't worked in this because it's 
kind of weird. I don't know exactly what it is. I've read that some industrial floppy drives, which is the kind of thing that would be in this, can have a different pinout, so it might be something like that. Um, more research is needed, and uh, one of these days I'll get around to that, but for right now, I am able to kind of get it to work, so I can use it as is. Okay, the disk is formatted, and I wanted to show you just how so simply easy it is to make a disk with midis on here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this disk on my Mac here that's running Linux. All right, so there it is. It's loaded, and again, this is what's super weird. So if I take one of these, all right, that disk just worked, all right? If I put a disk fresh out of the box of Maxell disks, improper disks, all right, put this into the floppy drive here and refresh it, it will also work with no issues. Yep, there we go. I'll copy a MIDI onto this one, and there we go. It won't work. Or it will and make a liar out of me. Maybe it needs files? I don't know. Huh. This is why it's taken me so long to make this video. This thing is extremely unpredictable. Oh well, let's hear Kangen.mid. But uh, one thing I can do, so I can put this disc in here now and we can try out some non-standard MIDI files. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick something completely different. Alright, so you've heard this. Okay. Now we're going to do something a little different here, and we're going to load a different version of Bad Touch. This is one of the things that ends up making the whole process of finding midis and putting them on the discs take forever, because it's, it's a trial and error thing to figure out which ones are the best to have on there. So this one, I think, is a remix, but it is pretty obviously worse than the other one. <laughs> now, if you've watched other channels like Techmoan, you may be thinking this is a very similar device to the MT90, or the MT90S, which is the um, device that's more meant for exactly what I'm trying to do here, and that is play midis off of a disc and to do it recreationally. Although those were somewhat designed for karaoke, this lacks the microphone input to mix audio in real time, so it's not designed to do that. This really is meant more for music production. Um, and unfortunately, as a result, uh, it doesn't play multiple midis back very well. Now, when you press play, it's going to play the song, um, but it's not going to continue on to the next song. It's meant to have other features. So like the count in and the metronome, these are things that you're more expected to want to use on a device like this. However, it does have the ability to play back all of the midis on the disc at once. However, the Duke Nukem midis here show why that's not necessarily always going to be what you want. So I'm going to do chain play here, which is the way that you can play back all of the midis on the disc, and you're going to immediately hear a problem. This is way too fast. Now, this is something to do with how the midis are encoded in the actual files. This is not a playback error with the device. Um, I have had this kind of issue on the Disc Orchestra by Yamaha as well, but that is annoying. If I stop this and put in the Doom disc, though, we'll see that this does work better, and I can hit chain play here, and it will go through. It'll start with Bunny. But the playback speed is correct. Uh, another thing, um, when you play back midis that are normal like this, um, they will just have the correct tempo. But some of the midis that are created to abuse the hardware in a way to make it sound a little bit better um, will play back at crazy tempos, like 240. But they'll have the notes be at the 
half of the speed that they're intended to be or something like that, and they're using it just to be able to get more notes per second. So <laughs> there are a lot of ways that the midis are exploited um, with the hardware, and those kinds of midis can not always play back perfectly on hardware like this, so that is one of the limitations. Here are some of the downsides of the MT200 compared to something like the MT90. Uh, if I stop and then continue, it will continue playback. However, I've now lost chain play, and when this ends, it will not continue on to the next file. Additionally, if I skip down a little bit more, like let's say I go to uh, probably 10 here, will be E1M9. Yeah. Um, so this is a good song. I like this one. Let's say I wanted to start by listening to this one, and then I wanted to continue on to the rest of the midis after that. If I press chain play here, it's going to go back to MIDI 1 and play Bunny again, because this does not have the ability to continue playback um, from any point in the midis. Um, the chain play is really only designed for putting in a disc, hitting that button, listening to the entire disc, and then removing it, which is a bit disappointing. But it's really fine, because if you're just listening to stuff, that'll work. Um, it does mean that you have no pause, though, so your best option is just to mute and then bring the volume back up if you need to do something, like take a phone call. So that's a little unfortunate, but that's about the only thing that an MT-90 can do that this can't, so that's not too bad. Now, another thing I want to demonstrate here is just how awesome it sounds, because it is basically a Roland SC-55. Now, obviously, Doom and Duke Nukem 3D have sounded perfect here. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the way they sound. But I also want to play something like the Descent theme, which is personally one of my favorite MIDI tracks to play back on the SC-55. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This sounds identical to an SC-55, even though this is not technically a sound canvas device. And that's just because it is a general standard device, which is basically what the sound canvas was. So it is the Roland unique MIDI sounds and features in this, even though it is technically not a sound canvas. Now, there is a very first world problem for people who are MIDI enthusiasts, and that is the MT-32, because the Roland SC-55 and most other MIDI sound modules are designed to be half of a media rack, where they can be mounted with screws into an actual rack to hold multiple pieces of equipment. The MT-32 is not. It is a standalone device and is completely its own size and shape that almost nothing else is a standard in line with. Except, and you can probably see where I'm going here, the MT-200. It and the MT-32 go together so phenomenally well that if you're setting up a desktop space with MIDI synthesizers to use with a computer, this just blows the pants off of an SE-55 for looks. And you get floppy playback. Now, I'm not going to spend the time on this in this video because I don't have the power supplies all ready to go and the MIDI cables and the audio mixing, but this device, the MT-200, could actually route the MIDI output from here into the MT-32 and you could listen to MIDI discs of MT-32 playback as well, which is just really cool to be able to do. Now, seeing it next to the MT-32 begs the question, how well would it work with a vintage PC? Well, the answer is extremely well. So I've got a floppy disk in here with the SimCity 2000 music, and let me just go ahead and demonstrate playing a song from it. Now, the device has a volume control that I've been using this through throughout the whole video, um, but we also have the line in control on the computer now. 
Now I have this connected through the two TRS outputs, but you could just use a quarter 20 or a quarter inch uh, headphone adapter for the phone's port on the back and plug this into the line in port on your sound card. Now the sound card I'm using in this computer is an Aureal Vortex 2, an 8830, and it does this extremely easily. Now also, this supports passing through a, a uh, gamepad. So the cable I have has a gamepad port on it. So I actually have this connected to the game port and the controller at the same time. So this doesn't impinge on using this computer at all. I'm going to shut this down and we're just gonna launch Doom. This is 70 Hertz, forgive me. Uh, I'm not gonna adjust the shutter speed. Oh, I will make it brighter for you though. <laughs> So we can hear the music very clearly, and that is playing through the MT-200, and it sounds completely perfect. But we also have all of the other sounds that you would expect here as well. So, it really is a good standalone MIDI player off of floppy disks and a great option for using with computers. Now, if you were wondering how this is set up, it is very simply, it's just set to use the sound canvas output and it works fine. Uh, it's not technically a sound canvas device again, but it is general standard, which is effectively the same thing. So this works perfectly with all of the sound canvas games that you would expect to run. But that is the MT200 working with DOS software, and it is really just that easy to get set up. Well, that is pretty much everything I wanted to cover with the MT32. It is great for midis on floppy and midis from games, and it is just one of my most favorite pieces of vintage computer equipment I have, and I do mean that sincerely. There's been multiple days where I've just sat down, put music on discs for it, and just jammed to those lovely MIDI sounds. It is great. I really need to get it hooked up more permanently to my Tiny Pentium, just so I can have access to it through there as well, but man, it is great. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Roland MT200, and if you want to support the channel, I have some links to ways you can do that in the description. But for now, that's it, and... I'll see you next time.